Hey everybody, welcome to GDPG, where we play games talk game design. And today we're playing Overland, which is a game that I've been excited about for a little while, and was fortunate enough to get into their, like, early access? It, they, basically, they, they released um, 500 copies of the game, like, super early access, and I jumped on that shit because I'm subscribed to that newsletter. So if you want this, subscribe to that newsletter of theirs. And they'll tell you when the next patch goes out. I haven't played any of this, so I don't <laughs> so, know what to expect. Yeah, over, so Overland is made by Finji Co. Uh, or just Finji, I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, they're a team of indie developers. Um, notably, I, I know Adam Saltzman um, from games like Cannibalt. Um, so fun game. He, he's, he's a really good programmer. Um, and then there's a couple of other people on Overland that make these, this beautiful art. Um, but this game is basically a turn-based survival game. Um, and and I'll, you know, we'll jump into it so you can see. But it's, it's actually really interesting. New game. New, new game. New game. E oh, maybe we have to do... Oh, okay. I see. It's a selection. Okay. Aha. All right. So there's your car. <laughs> Great powers of observation from Nathan Sanders. Or Kilthorne, whatever you are these days. You'll never know. Okay, so basically, we are Daryl. I think it's it's always randomized, right? Um, but he finally let his cat go. This is his old job. Oh. So we're in the post-apocalypse at this point, right? <coughs> you can see in this corner, there's this weird little monster thing that's just kind of like twitching around. You're like, what is that thing? Yeah, it's just an upside-down yeah. pigeon. Um, so, basically, what we're going to do is, we, we have a three-seat car, and we have a health pack sitting in here. Um, this person is just kind of sitting here, so we're going to move up to them and be like, what's up, dude? And end our turn, company. because... So, these little meters here are basically our turns, uh, or like, our number of actions, and we can move X AP. amount of... Yeah, it, it, it basically is your AP. Um... I'm not sure how many tiles you can move per action point. It actually kind of changes per some characters, but so we're going to spend one action point to invite this sucker to join us. Alright. And they're nice enough to always start us off with two two people. Okay. Um, because if you just have one person, this game gets very difficult very quick. Um, so, okay, cool. We have this guy now. Um, since I only have one AP left, I'm just going to move toward the car. Now I'm going to jump over to... This guy. There it goes. I'll stop the world and know with you. And we're going to not search that because I'm out of action points. So you can move diagonal. Uh, <coughs> yes. Well, you did just a bit ago. It was only one of your AP. Yeah. That's um, what I'm going to call it because... I, that's fair. I, so so the main trick... Actually, I'll, I'll just show you guys. So first I'm going to search this. Um, and find a bottle, which actually I'm going to take because that is better than a stick. So, um, st there's basically melee weapons and ranged weapons. Um, stick is a melee weapon. See how it has two dots down there? Mm -hmm. That represents how many uses I get out of it. Um, initially, I thought that it would be, like, damage rating, um, yeah. but you just use it twice and it breaks, and then the bottle has one use because we throw it. Um, mm. Now, I, I don't think that there's any indication in what the damage dealt by items is yet, um, and I don't know if there will be, but there is there is a difference, right? Like, I can get a knife, and that will have, like, three uses, and I could get a pipe that has three uses, and the knife will, like, without a doubt, do more damage. So you don't exactly know how much damage it's dealing, then? Correct. Now, we also don't have any indication on what our health is or what enemy health is. Um, and I'm sure we'll see that at some point, too. But um, I, it, it's an interesting choice on their part. So here's the other main mechanic. These guys are attracted to sound. So if I were to say, let's push this, and this guy's going to make a snide, com snide comment about making more noise. Actually, wow, that didn't create any new guys. So, okay, what normally happens is is that we make more noise and then little holes start appearing and then more monsters come out. I'm guessing since this is the, the, the beginning, they're taking it easy on us and being like, we're not going to kill you on the very first stage. So we're going to move this guy over here. But now you're so close to him. As far as tutorials go, though, I think that this area is 
pretty smart in that they give us kind of like a playground to to kind of like poke and prod things and figure out how this game works without just like straight up killing us. So this guy, Daryl, has a stone. I'm going to throw it at the monster and kill it. All right. <laughs> Dead. Stones are actually pretty strong, surprisingly. Um, Rowan rocks. Right? And so at this point, like, I guess I just killed him and they're not going to generate any more. But now we can just kind of like go through the turns and the turns don't really mean anything anymore. Um, so instead, we're just going to keep looting, which really none of this stuff is that useful anyway. So we're going to go and oops. Oh, the one nice thing is that we do get a back button. So if, say, and it only works for some things, right? So I could like move over here and be like, oh wait, I didn't mean to click there. I can take back the actions. Now if I jump into the car or say like I siphon or I search something, I can't take that back because um, design wise, basically if I search something and find like, oh, that item is useless, haha, <laughs> back button. Yeah. Um, it totally negates, you you can up Movement is, is usually, it, for strategy games at least like this, it's mm -hmm. our tactical based. It's pretty common to see you be able to take back your movements yeah i honestly i no think consequence to it yeah and and i think that's probably the best way to handle it too like there's no reason to, to penalize the players from like taking back their movement but there's no better way to like penalize a player from wanting to take back a an action of like searching something by saying like you can't take it back yeah so here's basically how this game works. We went through that square, that whole like zone, and now we get the option to move to either of these other randomly generated zones or just drive forward and spend 10 gas. Now we have 15 gas. Um, we could stop here and, and <coughs> get a, potentially a new ally named Troy. We have no idea who Troy is or what he, he might have. Um, but each character has randomized abilities too in different uh. stats. Um, or we could go to Stewart, which is a location, I guess, and stockpile gas. Since we have 15, we're basically full in this car. Um, I'm going to say it's probably better to get another companion. New people. New people. Action economy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, it's interesting, too, because we only have so many slots to carry anything like each character can basically only hold one item our car has one storage spot Jeez. is very very limited all right and even the gasoline like it can only the tank can only hold so much so it's very much a game of like having to constantly manage your equipment um and i think that's sort of the one downside right is if i find say i find like fuel in this car right here um and i'm carrying say i'm carrying like a weapon right or a shield and I don't exactly want to drop it. Um, well, I have to if I want to carry the gas back to the car. And then if I still want the oh. shield, I have to go all the way back and grab it. And then all the way back to the car. Um, for the most part, I think that adds to the challenge. Um, but there are some scenarios where it's just like, I've basically already... You've already killed all the monsters, or you've already like taken care of the threats on the field. It's just ex extra steps that you have to take. Exactly, and killing the monsters in this game is definitely not the right solution, um, because if you kill them, it generally spawns two more. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's it's very. Um, you only kill them in dire situations, huh. uh, which is a very interesting concept for the game because it kind of keeps you on your toes a lot. Um, and I think the characters do a good job at reinforcing that by being like, way to go. Now you just screwed us even more. So they talk to you and are like, that was, just, that was a bad action. Yeah. Um, another interesting thing, too, is that sometimes these guys will be like, no, I'd rather go solo. And they just go around killing the monsters on the field. <laughs> and you're like, no, you can't stop it. You control them. They just do it. Yep. So this guy, oh, yes. Okay. I love guys like this. Okay. So he has CPR training, which means he can revive people that are i think it means that they can revive people with no health um because you can get damaged and you don't need cpr training in order to use a med kit on someone but i think each of our characters can take two hits basically and yeah. so i think cpr training means that you can bring someone back from that point energetic though is awesome because he gets more movement for free or no he gets more oh yeah maybe it is one extra action 
doesn't look like he has one extra action looking at his indications i think last time i had it someone with energetic they had three little dots they here the, the three i'll have to check maybe that was just an odd turn or something like that yeah it looks like everybody else is only able to move one <coughs> well they can do it at least they can move at least two squares that guy only had already consumed one of his uh, energy at the time gotcha. So um, two, and then one, two. Yeah. Huh. Okay, so we'll pull this, which will, should create noise. No. Maybe this is like super tutorial zone, because I feel like this is being very easy on me. Or maybe it's not a 100% chance that it happens. I guess that's that's possible. Since, I, I don't know if I specified this, but this game is in like very early alpha. Which I will still argue, like I do every single time, this game is too pretty to be an alpha. I mean, I guess considerably Maybe. you're an alpha until you get all the like core functionality in your game. Um, so I guess it still is technically an alpha. But like, generally you don't see games being this pretty in alpha. I feel like... I mean, it's possible. I uh, Maybe... Like, aesthetically, it looks great, and I they really don't have to do a, a heck of a lot to it to, to, I guess, improve upon it. They, I suppose they could do things like add faces to the characters and everything, but personally, I like it the way it is. Yeah, and generally, so. we're so zoomed out, I feel like adding a face to them is sort of superfluous. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're just about done for this episode, but um, I guess uh, for question of the day for y'all... Uh, after after watching this, and, and this is my first time experiencing it as, as well. Uh, really, what do you think about um, what do you think about the the combat? You mentioned that killing the monsters isn't actually the way to go, mm -hmm. uh, and we didn't really see any rape or repercussions, but there definitely will be repercussions down the line. So, in that game that's about survival, where combat is not a necessity and even frowned upon. Uh, how do you feel like that differs from most games nowadays that are even survival based? Hmm. Yeah, no, that's actually a really good question because I think most survival games are still like you you have like three even bullets, the use them wisely. Even flaming the flood is like it's not combat based, but you still make traps and mm -hmm. buildings with them. Hmm. So, yeah. That's about all I got. Cool. Well, let us know in the comment section what your answer to the question of the day is. And in the meantime, be sure to vote in this little voting thing right here. We changed our voting system, so I'm not totally sure where they're going to appear. But uh, basically how it works is we're, we're going to be playing this this game for however much health the, the, the little main video click thing has. So if it has like three health, that means it has three episodes. If you don't vote on it, it loses health, and then it dies, and then we die. I mean, it's going to lose health. Basically, whatever gets the most votes by the time the health runs out is what we're going to play next. So if it's more um, Outland, I keep wanting to say like Overland or Outland. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to stop here while, while it's already sinking, but... Whatever gets the most votes is what we play next. <laughs> it's totally Overland. It's, it's Overland. Oh, I, I, was I like, keep I'm pretty sure it's Overland. I keep like almost saying every other O game like Outlast or Oh, oh that's fair. It's like it's that's a very different game, but you know. <laughs> well, thank you for watching everybody and we will see you in the next episode. Adios.